Welcome to the Tobacco Online Policy Seminar. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Mike Pesco, a tobacco control researcher at Georgia State University. TOPS is being organized by myself, Catherine McLean from Temple University, C. Shang from the Ohio State University, and Justin White from the University of California, San Francisco. The seminar will be one hour with questions from the moderator and discussant. The audience may pose questions and comments in the Q&A panel, and the moderator will draw from these questions and comments in conversation with the presenter. Please review the guidelines on tobaccopolicy.org for acceptable comments. Please keep the comments professional and related to the research being discussed. Comments that meet the seminar series guidelines will be shared with the presenter afterwards, even if they are not read aloud. Your comments are very much appreciated. The presentation is being video recorded and will be made available along with the presentation slides on the TOPS website, tobaccopolicy.org. I will turn the presentation over to today's moderator, Justin White from UCSF to introduce our speaker. Today we continue our winter 2022 season with a single paper presentation by Dr. Rizki Sirigar entitled, Exposure to Television Ads as a Driver of Smoking Prevalence. Dr. Sirigar is an international trade economist and development economist. Her research aims to provide guidance in dealing with the distributional impacts of globalization and economic policies on various fronts, including regional development and public health. She obtained her PhD in economics from the University of California, Davis in 2021. She currently serves as a postdoctoral researcher at the Chair of International Economic Policy at the University of Mainz in Germany. Our discussant today is Dr. Catherine McLean. Dr. Sirigar, thank you so much for presenting for us today. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so I'm going to start sharing my slides uh, before I start. Um, um, okay. Is, can you see it uh, well? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, so good evening from my side of the world, which is in, I'm currently in Germany. Uh, thank you so much for having me to Tobacco Online Policy Seminar. Thank you for such an amazing opportunity to present my work. So today I'm going to present uh, this paper called Exposure to Television Ads as Driver of Smoking Prevalence. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I think Justin will, will also moderate uh, the question and answer. So before I start, just some uh, disclosure. I have no competing interest to disclose. Uh, I have not received tobacco related funding over the past 10 years. Um, all right, so let's move on to what uh, motivates me on wor working on this project. So we see overall globally that uh, smoking prevalence have been declining. Unfortunately, the success actually varied uh, over Country, uh, across countries. So here I map uh, uh, how countries' success and failure uh, in reducing smoking prevalence between 2000 and 2015. Countries with blue colors are the ones that can uh, uh, reduce uh, the smoking prevalence uh, 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 a lot, uh, especially the one with uh, dark blue, but countries that are coded as uh, pink, <laughs> unfortunately, has to increase, uh, have been increasing their uh, smoking preference. As we can see in terms of regional variations, most of these countries that have been uh, experiencing increase in smoking prevalence are concentrated in Africa, Middle East, and Southeast Asia. For example, uh, Congo experienced the largest growth with 37.2 percentage point increase, which is a very large point uh, uh, smoking prevalence increase within 15 years. Indonesia, which is the country that we are going to study today, jumped from 16th place in 2000 to the second place uh, with 75% uh, smoking prevalence for adult milk. So Indonesia is also one of the country with the highest uh, smoking prevalence. So uh, having this uh, uh, um, phenomenon that we see uh, today, um, I try to understand the following uh, question. How does an improvement in marketing technology used to uh, advertise tobacco uh, affect smoking prevalence? And just a, a brief uh, main finding on uh, what I find. Uh, first, um, I, I find that higher relative local exposure to televisions, which plural proliferates the broadcast of tobacco ads, increases smoking participation of young adults. So uh, as far as I know, this is the first study with national representative data that focuses on the impact of marketing to smoking participation in developing country setting where uh, smoking prevalence is still rising. 
uh, just some review of related literature. This paper is related to uh, the uh, one topic uh, on one side is the impact of introduction and proliferation of electronic media to human and social capital. In particular, this paper fills in the gap in how, uh, in showing how exposure to advertising through TV increases smoking participation within a developing country context. Uh, this paper is closest to the paper by Thomas 2019, uh, who studies the impact of introduction of TV on smoking prevalence in the US. Uh, also related to Auckland 2009 on the impact of the introduction of private TV stations on social capital in Indonesia. This paper is also related to a very active literature on smoking behavior. In particular, I study how the impact of, of advertising exposure uh, affect smoking participation to smoke to young adults. So just uh, um, um, as Warner and Paul 1992 emphasize, despite advertisings are not the sole determ determinant of smoking, it is the most tractable one. So I find this is something that we really, uh, this is something that is important to understand for evidence-based policy making. Uh, the last one is related to the role, uh, this paper related to the role of advertising in firm dynamics, in particular because here I will borrow a theoretical framework used in international trade setting. Uh, okay, so to start and answer the question and in answer the, to, to answer in order to answer the research question, um, I built upon a theoretical framework in international trade, especially this marketing of uh, marketing um, framework in international trade uh, by Arcolakis 2010, 2010. So what what is interesting in this framework is that this uh, theoretical framework introduced a distinct new margin in welfare gains from uh, more trade. So in classical international trade theory, um, people or countries gain from more trade with each other through two uh, margins, which is intensive margin and extensive margin. However, since there is marketing costs, uh, then uh, Arcolakis introduced a new margin, which is the new consumer margin. Let's go one by one. So let me start with the one that I will focus more in the paper, new consumer margin. So this, is mar this margin refers to welfare gains that are enjoyed by new consumers. So for example, if we relate it to smoking behavior, this refers to more smokers uh, in the economy, or there is new smokers uh, um, that try to that try, that consume tobacco. I will be really try to kind of uh, also very um, uh, careful here. I don't yet put the uh, condition when, for example, tobacco is regarded as um, goods that gives you this utility or something that is bad for your health, for example. So this is tobacco as just a typical uh, 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 goods uh, to be consumed. The, this margin is different with intensive margin, which refers to the welfare gain from those who already consume and consume more. So in re, uh, relation to smoking behavior, this I think related to smoking intensity. So those that already uh, smoke, whether they smoke more or not. However, I will not focus on this margin because I think I need to, in, in, uh, I will, um, I recognize that in order to study smoking intensity, then we may need to take into account tobacco as an addictive substance, which I'm not going to do uh, in this paper. The last one is extensive margin, which is the welfare gain uh, uh, coming from having new export destinations. So this will not also be in the, the focus of the paper because I will focus on one particular market, especially Indonesia. Um, and I will uh, let you know empirically this uh, extensive margin is not very active uh, in this context. So um, just a brief flavor of how our Arcolakis 2010 looks like. Uh, so the basic environment is that firms are heterogeneous or they vary uh, from one to another in terms of productivity. And I call this productivity as a parameter pi. What stands out with this framework is this marketing uh, uh, framework. Uh, so let's denote S as the number of ads sent by a firm. L as the number of consumers, so this is kind of number of population. Then N as a function of S is the probability that a particular consumer sees the ad at least once after 
as many ads have been sent. So this is kind of how much more, uh, how much, how big is the market share or market penetration that the ads can reach. Um, in order to have more structure, uh, so Arcolac is uh, proposed three assumptions on the nature of marketing technology. The first one, and I think this is the most important one for this paper, is that uh, they, uh, we assume the number of consumers who see the ad is given by L to the power of one minus alpha. This alpha range from zero to one. Let's see what does it mean. So when alpha is one, it means that one ad is read by one consumer. So this is kind of like flyers. One flyer will be um, exposed, uh, will expose one consumer, right? Alpha equals to zero is uh, the case when one ad can reach a given share of consumers in the market. So for example, this is TV ads. Hence, I refer to improvement in marketing technology as a decrease in alpha, so this parameter. Another assumption is that uh, there is decreasing return to or uh, increasing marginal cost of marketing. Basically, if you already attain certain share of consumer, the next consumer to attain is more costly or it is harder to get more consumer. Um, this is quite relevant um, for the cigarette industry and some studies do, shows, do show that uh, uh, it faces diminishing return in advertising. The last one is that just production function of this uh, marketing services uh, use uh, the labor in the country J, which is the destination mar uh, market, and country I, which is the origin uh, market. Um, so in equilibrium, just to sum up, firms will maximize profits, which is the difference between revenue or how much they receive from selling their goods with labor cost of production and labor cost of marketing costs. So since a firm will only enter a market if they can reach at least one consumer, then there, there exists an entry threshold, or I call this um, pi star, so pi, uh, in terms of productivity. So if a, a, product, uh, a firm has productivity bigger than this entry threshold, then they will enter the market, then how, how big the share of consumers to be rich is an outcome. So it's an endogenous outcome. So there, uh, each firm will have a, an optimal share of consumers and I call it NIG. Um, how does uh, the relationship between productivity and market, optimal market shares look like? This proposition show it. So for example, let's do the first equation. If a firm has productivity less than the entry threshold, then they will not enter the market, right? So the market share penetration is zero. If the firms have productivity pi that are bigger than the entry threshold, then they will enter the market. So how do two firms that enter the market differ? So for example, we have firm one and firm two. Firm one has bigger uh, productivity than firm two, then the result is that the market share of firm one is bigger than the market share of firm two. So the big, the higher your productivity is, then which means that the mar your market penetration is higher. So let's just uh, summarize what we have so far. There are several things that matters to market penetration. Um, first is productivity growth, right, and then the marketing technology or alpha. I also put another outcome, which is price, because price is directly related to productivity. On top of it, there may be some other exogenous variables like tax, tariff, trade costs that may affect price, but not productivity. So how do we see, uh, so basically uh, I, I will take some comparative statics of the two parameters to show what, if these two uh, variables change, uh, what will be the market share penetration, uh, the changes in market share. So let's do first for the productivity growth. We see from the proposition that the higher your productivity, the higher your market share. So, or in other words, the first derivative here uh, is positive. So the sign is positive. It means also if a firm experience an increase in productivity, then this firm will have higher uh, market penetration. Another one is that the marketing technology. So what happens if alpha changes? 
Here, just um, um, I derived the, the derivative, the comparative static to of changing alpha to uh, market penetration or NIJ, and we see the sign is negative. What does it mean? It means that as it gets easier to reach more consumer per ad, or in other words, as alpha declines, then the optimal market penetration increases. Yeah. So if it's easy, if marketing technology improves, the more easy for firms to reach market. Um, okay. So that's uh, my um, the, the theoretical framework that guide me on my empirics. Uh, first, I will show you why I think uh, the smoking environment of Indonesia in 2000s uh, is a great uh, context to study this. Let's see first in terms of com uh, consumption. So as I've said before, Indonesia is one of the biggest, uh, has one of the highest smoking prevalence in adult males. Most of the uh, smokers are male uh, and very little uh, for smoke. The smoking prevalence for female is quite small. Um, tobacco products also contribute uh, the third biggest share in household consumption basket. So for example, here comparing the um, different commodity groups, for example, uh, the expenditure to, on tobacco in the blue uh, color is very high compared to education costs or health costs. And it's just uh, half of what uh, people spend on average on rice. So the, uh, tobacco is very big. People uh, actually consume a lot of tobacco on average. Another thing is that there is substantial variation in smoking prevalence across regions. So here I plot the recent smoking prevalence of adults um, 15 years old and above. So across districts, so it, it can go from as low as 10% to as high as 60%. Another side of the story is, of course, the, of course, the industry. So, uh, and it's important in, in the context of Indonesia because tobacco manufacturing industry is not a new industry. It was established early in the 20th century, even before the country get independence. Uh, the characteristic is that the industry has many small firms with few large firms. And actually the three biggest firms account for more than 70% of the market share. Another important thing in terms of international trade, most of tobacco manufacturers sell domestically, including those that are foreign owned and imports are rather small. So most of the consumption are uh, supplied by domestic production. So let's go back again to what the, theoretic, the theory guide us in, in understanding the, uh, how market share of this firm um, in, in, uh, from the supply side. So we know that we can collect two parameters and one variable that can affect um, optimal market share, market technology, marketing technology, productivity, and price. So um, here I document uh, what happened in uh, Indonesia from 1990 to 2010 in terms of these three uh, variables. So the first fact is that exposure to marketing through television has expanded and varied spatially. What's interesting is that uh, before 1993, there was only one state-owned TV stations, which um, if it's state-owned, it doesn't broadcast ads. But since 1993, uh, Indonesia started to have private TV stations that broadcast these uh, ads, uh, including tobacco ads. So uh, the graph here plot the histogram of uh, the average um, number of private TV stations that can be received by villages, uh, but this is a district average. The blue bars show the data in 2003 and the yellow bars show the data in 2005. There are two facts that we can infer here. First, in each of the year, there is high variation across space. Second, there is, uh, during 2003 and 2005, there are more private TV stations. So for example, um, you, you have already most of the private TV stations, uh, if you have four TV stations that you can receive in 2003, but in 2005, you can get at even more than 10, okay? Second fact is that uh, the industry, we need to take into account whether they have productivity boost, right? So here I plot the industry average of uh, the industry, uh, the 
the product the industry average productivity. So the two lines just differ in terms of the estimation, but basically they show the same thing, which is before 2010, uh, the productivity average is uh, quite stagnant. So this will guide me also to take into uh, account only data before 2010 where when the productivity uh, increase has not uh, um, materialized. Uh, last, last one, uh, the prices. So um, many studies document that the uh, real price of cigarettes in Indonesia have been quite stagnant. So here I show the observed real price of cigarettes spent by uh, households from the main data set that I will use, which is IFLS. Um, and you can see that there is a slight increase, but uh, it's not super, it's not really high um, or not really uh, significant. Um, I just want to also note that there is substantial tax hike happened in 2008. So also, again, this is why I will not take uh, IFLS 2014 and just uh, take the IFLS before 2008 as the context that I'm going to focus on. Um, of, now we have covered the supply side and the demand side. Now we need to take into account the tobacco policies. So um, I think the overall story is that there is lack of policies in, in controlling tobacco in Indonesia, especially before 2010, 2012. Yeah. So I think this is uh, uh, this shows that given the, all the three facts and also uh, what uh, the smoking environment that I uh, lay out just now, in, it seems that Indonesian economy in the 2000s is an appropriate context to study the impact of an increase in advertising exposure to smoking prevalence because many other factors seems to be quite stagnant and only marketing technology that has been um, um, changing. So uh, let's move what um, we want to uh, what, um, we want to see in the theory to the data. So the main data sets that I use are the following. One is Indonesia Family Life Survey or IFLS. So this is a nice data set that I think is available for public. Uh, it uh, represents 83% of Indonesia's population with very high recontact rate. So this is quite nationally representative. So it is conducted every seven years. Um, uh, and I will include uh, uh, the wave in 2000 and 2007. So, um, 2007. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, it also asks a comprehensive questionnaire on health outcomes, including whether the person smoke or not. And also, of course, I can get many socioeconomic variables from uh, this data sets. Uh, it would be nice if I can take also IFLS 1993, which is when the TV, private TV station just being introduced. Unfortunately, the question on smoking participation was not really complete for that survey. So I think I will just focus on uh, the, the, these waves, 2000 and 2007. Uh, the other data sets that I use is a village census or a PODES. This covered the whole villages in Indonesia, which is the lowest administrative units in Indonesia. So I will, it's done three annually. Uh, I'll take 2003 for a TV exposure of wave 2000 in IFLS and uh, uh, village census 2005, 2006 for the IFLS 2007. It's not super ideal, but I think this is the best I think we can do right now. Uh, the variable of interest is that uh, the number of TV channels that uh, can be received in each village. Um, I also take some more selection criteria because I would like to focus more on new consumer margin, right? So instead of like the intensive margin. So I uh, select only uh, individuals that are 17 to 23 years old and not older. Um, so 17, why is the cutoff is like this? Because they start to have the smoking participation questions in uh, if the individual uh, is 17 years old. I also not take the household hats uh, just because I would like to control for the smoking participation of household hats. In terms of the variable on the treatment, which is TV signal receptions, uh, I follow Olken that shows that these receptions are not uh, a purely endogenous decision of playing TV towers, but also uh, determined by terrain or topography. So um, it, it, um, it exogenously determined. 
in particular, this paper will exploit the temporal and regional variation in relative intensity of exposure to televisions. I will go about this relative just here. So how can I construct this variable of interest for TV, the exposure on TV? So I computed as a standardized value of the average number of TV channels received for each sub-districts. Why sub-districts? Because unfortunately, uh, the, the geographical code that the individuals I, uh, we have in IFLS is not by village level, but by sub-district which is quite granular. It's just the next higher administrative level. And why I use standardized value is because we see that between 2003 and 2005, we have more private TV stations, right? So it shouldn't be equal if you have four, if you can receive four private TV station in 2003, and if you have all still only four in 2005. So that's why I use uh, standardized value for each of the wave. Um, okay, so how can I interpret this uh, variable? Basically, an increase in this variable. So if you're relatively more exposed, it means that there is a decrease of alpha in your locals, yeah? So uh, that is a one unit of TV ads can reach a bigger fraction of population, okay? Another question that you may have is that, what about radio, right? Uh, TV, uh, radio broadcast, um, ads from through radio. So I follow Olkan 2009 that shows that there is high correlation between TV reception and radio reception. So let's just take the impact as for, uh, to be the general effect of broadcast media. Uh, armed with the, this variable of interest, which is TV, uh, this is the baseline um, empirical strategy. So the outcome variable is smoke, uh, which is whether the person I with HC living in sub-district S from survey T smokes or not. And then what's important here, I think, is just that uh, the TV uh, exposure is I interacted with uh, age cohort to take into account any heterogeneity of impact. I control for uh, control, uh, individual controls, uh, uh, age fix effects, provincial prefix effects to take into account maybe certain cultural, uh, cultural affinity to smoking, uh, uh, weight, time fix effects to take into account microeconomic shocks like inflation, and also province uh, fix effects interacted with time fix effects to take into account maybe there is any changes uh, in provincial regulation over time. So I think I'll stop here first, um, and and I let Justin to lead us uh, for the discussion. Yeah, great. We do have some questions in the queue. Um, first, I'll see if our discussant Catherine McLean has any questions for you or comments. Great. Uh, thanks so much. This is a really fascinating talk. Uh, just a couple of questions um, with the advertising with your exposure measure. Um, are you are you allowing for there to be cumulative effects of this exposure? Um, and or do we need to be thinking about depreciation of exposure over time? Can you repeat again the, the first uh, whether sure. it is depreciation or what? I think is there any sort of dynamics to ah. the exposure? So could that be either there's something cumulative about exposure or mm -hmm. should we be thinking about depreciation that perhaps an ad, I know it's an ex, a potential exposure or relative exposure, mm -hmm. but in the past, mm -hmm. do we need to think about the timing mm -hmm. of when the mm -hmm. exposure occurred? Mm -hmm. So that's a very good question. I think the way, uh, so be, the way I thought, let me just go back to this um, um, regression. So what I exploit here exactly on the dynamics within sub-districts. So I, there are some sub-districts that increase their relative intensity, relative exposure, but there are some dis sub districts that actually go down in terms of relative exposure. So maybe in terms of accumulated, yeah, I should take maybe those that are in the wave of 2000, they are exposed more in their lifetime, but I hope that will be captured by time fix effects for all people in the wave 2000. But in terms of local uh, relative exposure, yes, they, I take into account whether the sub-districts locally become more exposed or not. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, uh, great. Yeah. Um, another question, um, do you have any sense that um, perhaps firms 
are aware of the difference in the reception quality across these different localities? And is there any potential targeting of the firms to the localities with perhaps better exposure? Or should I be thinking about this as like a national advertising campaign that the firms engage in? So it really simply mm -hmm. is just some places mm -hmm. have more access than others and firms mm -hmm. can't are not nimbly able to kind of target their ads towards mm -hmm higher so, reception areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's really a good point. I really want to, for example, uh, control for their uh, this firm's advertising efforts in each locals because they do, for example, um, uh, sponsor certain events and so on. But um, I have not been able to get data on that. So I just hope that this uh, province fix effects take care of it <laughs> or in province times time fix effect take care of it. And what I can remember, so I was really, I was a child during this period when we just find this, we just start to have private TV stations. I can still remember this Tobacco ads. Like it's really vivid. This one. <laughs> so um, I I just find that uh, in this period of time, it was just uh, this TV exposure. Uh, this, I mean, advertising through TV is just like a national exogenous um, changes in marketing technology suddenly, which can affect anyone depend on whether they can access the, the, the TV or not, right? So that's what I would like to exploit. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's great. Just, that was leading to my next question. Mm -hmm. um, if you can at all, can you speak to kind of the info? Is this, did these ads convey information or is it sort of just getting people to switch brands? And mm -hmm. should, I think you indicated that there were a couple of, a few large companies and then a number of smaller companies. Mm -hmm. Is it really just these large companies that are doing the, the advertising or is it all of the companies and what mm -hmm. is, what information is being conveyed? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't have the universe data of like all this list of advert TV advertising, but my sense from what I remember is that um, only the big firms uh, uh, have this TV ads, uh, and um, there it was quite vulgar because there <laughs> there is lack of, of, of uh, <laughs> regulation <laughs> during this time, so we can't really see, for example, the. Uh, there are times that it, it was vivid with you know the the picture with pictorial, but although later on it, it's it's banned with if you cannot show it in the in, on TV. But um, I'm I'm also not a marketing uh, expert, so I'm happy if you, I can get any feedbacks on that. And I I don't know how to judge whether certain types of ads is only focusing on brand strategy or like uh, I'm I'm I don't have the you know capability to. To, to analyze that for now. I, I, I'm not an expert either, so I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't offer any, any thoughts there. I just one last question and I'll move to uh, give time for our audience. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what I'm wondering is you mentioned uh, the radio broadcasting and that seems to be highly correlated with the television broadcasting. Mm -hmm. What about mm -hmm. other, other forms of media like I'm thinking about newspapers or magazines? Are these common? Would we expect to see advertising in those mm -hmm. um, outlets? And should we be concerned about that? That's a really good point. And um, it's quite, it's very common to, especially during the time, this period, because there was no internet. So it was quite common to have advertising on newspaper and magazines. I'll, I'll take note on that and check whether I can maybe control for local um, news, uh, like uh, yeah, the, how much they, how big it is in e each of the sub districts or districts level. Yeah, that's a really good point. Thank and you so uh, much. One other quick question, uh, just very technical. Mm -hmm. How are you? Are you clustering mm -hmm. your standard errors at the province level, or how are you handling those? And then I. That's so so far, question. so far it's um, just robust standard errors. I should do maybe check whether if it's robust in province um, province uh, uh, um, standard like cluster it in province, but uh, yeah, I was I was not really concerned because this is in on individual level, and uh, it captures a nationally representative. But maybe you're right. Maybe there is some correlation within province that that may affect smoking behavior. You're right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think that actually relates to one question in the um, Q&A, which is about um, whether there's 
differences in terms of like the number of TV stations that are available within a given area and how um, that might uh, affect um, people's outcomes um, and, and their exposure or whether it's pretty homogeneous in terms of uh, uh, ads. Uh, so for in terms of TV stations, so um, it's, it's heterogeneous in terms of whether you can access the TV station or not. So I think that's what I, but once you can get that TV station, then uh, which is this kind of um, uh, variation. So um, I think it's quite, if you're in districts, you can, um, you can be in district with like 10 TV stations that you can receive, but on and on the other side, if you live in a district that can only have two, then I call it like rel different relative exposure. But once you can access this TV, uh, I mean, what I was, I was thinking is like the more private TV stations you can access, the more exposed you are. And um, another question is about um, how you define smoking as mm -hmm. your outcome is, uh, can you talk more about whether that's uh, sort of experimentation or whether it's regular tobacco use? Mm -hmm. So I cannot, uh, oh, that's a good point. Or, or any I, smoking? I, did, mm -hmm, I just use the questions whether you smoke or not, but um, I, there are questions that asking with how long have you smoked? Maybe then I should also interact, like, you know, take into account that. But I was thinking because I uh, asked those that are, quite young, which is 17 to 23 years. So these are not really those that have maybe formed certain behavior. So, but you're, um, you're right in terms of, um, I, I can, for example, see, you know, take um, a quest, you know, another outcome variable, which is whether you smoke daily or not, something like that. Yeah, they're, they're, that mm -hmm. might be interesting. Um, there's a couple questions about uh, alpha in your theoretical model, which I understood to be how many people, uh, it, it represents like how many people are, are reached by a given ad. And so mm -hmm. one is just like, is that, is that the right uh, interpretation? And the other is um, that what's the link between ad views and actual purchases, product sales? And do you do anything to sort of uh, account for the fact that every ad um, is not going to translate into a purchase? So um, in, let me answer the first question first. You're right, alpha is showing you how big of the fraction of population that one ad can uh, reach. Um, so um, it's um, appear here, right? That's um, another question. The other question is that um, I cannot see, for example, that's why I also do not um, study the intensive margin, which is uh, how much more you consume or how much less you consume, because I cannot see, for example, which brand that you consume. I can, for example, see how much in terms of cigarettes or how much, you know, in terms of tobacco, how big of gra how many grams, for example, but I cannot pinpoint add to, to certain brands to that, uh, to a certain consumption of um, brand. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there are a lot of other questions that maybe we'll come back to at the end if there's time, but I want to make sure you uh, have time to get through your talk. Sounds good. Thank you so much. So I think I stop here, right? And just let me go to the results uh, real quick as I don't have not that much anymore and happy to. So I hope I can get more uh, discussion later on. So yes, I do find evidence of new consumer margin. So this is the result of running the baseline regression that we just have now. The dependent variable is just uh, is whether you smoke or not. And of course, this is sample of 17 to 23 years old. Um, let me just go first on the first three columns here. Uh, if you see here, I put the sample as all, it means that I include not only male, but also female. Not surprisingly, the, if we only uh, include TV channels, exposure to TV is as uh, without interacting it with age, um, the impact is not statistically significant. And even if we uh, interacted interact this TV exposure measure with age, the impact is also not significant, actually negative in, uh, in older years. This is not super surprising because I include 
female here because uh, and female smoking prevalence is quite small in Indonesia and there is there are some study that shows there is negative stigma of uh, female who smoke so having this then I having this result I run again this baseline uh, regression only to males um, sample so again if we uh, uh, take uh, TV exposure to TV as without interacting it with age, the impact is insignificant. However, we see some more uh, some statistically significant impact when we interact the TV exposure with age. Um, remember, my our age cohort is 17 to 23. So please take the the first row here as for the baseline, which is 17 years old. And any coefficient here is different to 17 years old cohort, yeah? So let's go uh, one by one. So we see that um, here in the most stricter uh, uh, regression, um, we see that uh, the impact of having relatively more exposure to TV uh, um, increase your probability to smoke. Um, the difference between 18 and 19 years old and actually 20 is not statistically significant. So it's actually almost the same as the, um, the one in 17 years old. Um, and, how, and, and for the one in uh, older year is statistically negative, just meaning that the slope is uh, less steep. Yeah, I'll go to the marginal effect to, for making it uh, to be uh, clearer. So here is the marginal effect. Hmm. Okay, the first column here use uh, the, the preferred measure of uh, TV exposure. And as you can see here, uh, the impact is positive for uh, age 17, 18, and 19. What does this coefficient say? It's basically, if you live uh, in a sub-district with uh, one standard deviation more, um, TV exposure, it means that the chance of, if you're 17 years old male, your probability of you smoke increased by 3.7%. And if you're 18 years old, then the probability increased by 4.9%. And so, and if you're 19, then the probability increased by 5.6%. It is not statistically significant again uh, 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 for uh, older year, but this is not something surprising. Like many studies show that um, preference are formed when they are when people are young. So um, we can see here that the new consumer margin or the impact of this advertising are more active for those that are younger adults. Um, uh, in the baseline um, regressions, I also include age fixed effects. So this is the results of the age fixed effects, basically showing us the average uh, smoking uh, probability of smoking participation for each um, year. So for example, for it's quite varied. So it's good that we take into account these differences, but it's quite high. So for example, the one that is smallest here, if you're 17 years old, the average uh, probability that you will smoke is more than 50%. So it's quite high. Combining this uh, age fix effect and the marginal effect. So this um, um, graph illustrates um, how uh, the change of uh, the, this probability to smoke um, across uh, exposure to TV. So on the horizontal axis is this relative exposure to TV. Uh, and um, the, the, if you go from left to right, it means you becomes more uh, exposed. Um, accordingly, we see that the slope is positive for age 17, 18, and 19, and it's not really, um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, I mean, TV exposure doesn't really matter for older years. Um, since I also include some controls, so maybe some of you may also interested, uh, these are the controls uh, for the, each individuals and also the household head. So some studies, for example, take into uh, show that um, the smoking participation in young adults also depend on whether the parents smoke or not. So in here, I not um, sometimes this household head can be biological father, but uh, it can also not the actual uh, biological father or mother. Um, why? I think 
just because um, the influence may be higher, the influence is more um, relevant to uh, to uh, uh, these young adults uh, if uh, the smoking behavior is from where um, they they uh, have residence. So maybe just a little some. Um, interesting uh, results. So the blue lines are, uh, the blue dots are for full sample, so include female. The yellow dots are for um, male only sample. So uh, for attending schools, uh, give lower probability. If you're married and you're male, then higher probability that you will smoke, that you smoke. Um, and also if the household had smoke, uh, then there is also higher probability uh, for, for you to smoke. Um, I also uh, have another results on a long run impact. This, I'm not really sure on this results first, but let me just like go through it. Just uh, perhaps I can get, discuss it with you. So the good thing about IFLS data set is that we can follow the person over time. So here I follow the person seven years later on certain outcome variables. One, college, de college degree attainment, and uh, second, working status. So how do I do it? Because smoking and college degree attainment or working status can be um, spurious, so they can be endogenous. So I instrument the smoking status seven years later with smoking status during uh, young adults, yeah? So the result is that, uh, just to be brief, uh, so far, individuals who smoke uh, have a lower probability of possessing a college degree. And I don't see, uh, uh, on the other hand, I don't see statistically significant impact on uh, uh, working status. So just to sum up, uh, uh, um, just some conclusion. In this paper, I investigate the theoretical prediction that improvement in marketing technology generates new consumer. I test this prediction by uh, estimating the impact of exposure to TV uh, on smoking prevalence of young adults in Indonesia between 2000 and 2007. As predicted, higher relative local exposure to TV generates more smokers, especially those between 17 and 19 years old. If I can offer uh, some policy implication, the uh, there are two I think that are relevant. First, and, uh, this result stands in contrast to the argument that the purpose of tobacco ads is to strengthen branding. That is, it actually to only to affect smoking intensity. Here I show that it's not, it's actually have an effect on creating new consumer or new smokers. Uh, second, as many developing countries have a higher share of the young population and this evidence show that um, the margin is active to young adults. So advertising efforts of tobacco companies in such economies will have bigger micro consequences. So I uh, stop here. Uh, thank you so much for having me and I look forward to discuss this further. Thank you. Thanks. Let me turn it back to our uh, discussant, Catherine, to see uh, if she has comments. Thanks so much. Again, this is a really fascinating talk. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, I, your, your rationale for separating uh, men and women seemed very reasonable to me. Um, I'm also wondering, could it also be that there's there are gender differences in terms of watching television that might lead to the heterogeneous effects that is perhaps mm -hmm. women don't mm -hmm. watch television as much mm -hmm. as men? That's a really good point. And I don't know whether I can see uh, questions on, for example, how much TV you watch uh, in the questionnaire. But uh, since the exposure now is kind of like um, a local exposure, so I, I'm, I take it as a general impact. So it is, can be directly through because you watch TV, but also can be indirectly because the community in your local mm. accept more TV, uh, no, <laughs> more tobacco. <laughs> So uh, I, I don't, uh, yeah, I cannot um, uh, disentangle between these two, uh, in, uh, whether it's direct or indirect. Okay, thank you very much. Um, mm -hmm. Another a question just about the heterogeneity. Um, mm -hmm. You saw the effects for the 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, and then no effects for the older adult, for the mm -hmm. older young adults. Mm -hmm. um, I thought, you know, I'm totally on board that preferences could be established at those later ages. But were you surprised when I was looking at your marginals? I think the effect sizes were increasing from 17, 18, 19. Yes, here. And then yeah. they drop off. Now, I perhaps 
we need to be comparing these with the baseline means to think about like what the relative effect is. But were you surprised that the effects seem to increase and decline? I, 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 I'm not surprised and surprised maybe. <laughs> like, uh, I don't, yeah, I haven't really think deep, deeper on this, but I was just thinking, uh, so the, the legal age of being adult in Indonesia is 17 actually. So I think, and most students, I mean, high school uh, stop in, I mean, I end high school in 17 or 18 years old. So I was thinking many people already work in when they are 20, 21, 23. So um, I was just, maybe this is because then if they have not smoked, then they they don't start it because it's costly. <laughs> but um, I'm not sure how to see, yeah. yeah. What, I, what I may not have been clear here. I guess all I meant was it seems when you go 17, 18, 19, those effects seem to be increasing. And I think if, if we thought that the preferences were decline the the malleability uh, if that's a word yeah, of the yeah. of the preferences but i guess what i'm thinking is maybe if one was to compare those uh marginal effects yeah. with the baseline proportion smoking perhaps those would look more equal that's that's all i'm thinking about for those 17 to 19 year olds if that makes sense um um i think so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, and I would like to get feedbacks on this from, I mean, the audience too also, because I'm not sure whether maybe this is driven also by, you know, some kind of like um, uh, development, you know, human development preferences. Mm -hmm. uh, but so this slope is already uh, not depend on uh, the base. So this is, so here, for example, is, so the, the base is here. Right, so anything here is the, compared to the base. So I think if we want to see it, and this marginal effect is already taking into account that. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know whether the mechanism is because certain human development, or maybe I should think more deeply on that interpret in the interpretation of this increase and then suddenly discontinue jump, right? Sure, I'll follow up with just a yeah. short, quick talk, talk uh, comment. Uh, one mm -hmm. other, just descriptive comment. You showed the, mm -hmm. the large heterogeneity across the different regions in terms of smoking prevalence much earlier in your presentation. Um, mm -hmm. do you, uh, do you, is there any sense as to why that might be? Or is this culture, religion, um, or mm -hmm. just something idiosyncratic? Mm -hmm. So, um, I where is it? I think it's here. Uh, let me just go here. Uh, so I, in order to confirm that I should have, for example, another distribution in different years, right? So uh, maybe there is just idiosyncratic, but um, from you know um, studies that show um, uh, that that ethnographically you know study this, there are some you know cultural affinity on whether it's more accepted or it's less accepted or something like that. And for example, also um, maybe this is worth to be, to be mentioned. For example, most of this tobacco production is in two provinces only. So maybe in these provinces, they, the, the, they are more inclined to smoke, which I hope taken into, I mean, in the regression is taken care by the province fixed effects. So maybe this also drives um, this kind of the, 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 um, uh, distribution. Thanks very much. And thank you for the talk. I'll, I'll let our audience uh, ask you some questions, but thanks so much. Thank you. Great. So uh, one of the questions actually relates, you just mentioned the province fixed effects. Um, uh, one person asked whether you also need to or should be adjusting for some sort of lower administrative level, like sub-district, um, this person says, because ad regulation and available mm -hmm. TV channels might be different across uh, lower administrative levels. Mm -hmm. So that's a good point. Uh, so uh, most of, if there is any policy, local policy regulation, then it will be in the province level. Although now there are more um, district level that uh, government that try to have their own regulation. But during this period, it's quite rare there is very lax tobacco control policy but i can do that as robustness checks i mean for example i 
can take into account, I mean, include district fixed effects. I'm not sure whether if I can, if I include sub district fixed effects, then whether it's, it will, it will take up so many um, de degrees of freedom, but uh, I'll, I'll check about it. Yeah. So another question is about whether you have any data on TV use by age group, um, the thinking that the results might be sensitive mm -hmm. to their actual um, mm -hmm. TV use and, and thus exposure to mm -hmm. ads. Um, were you mm -hmm. able to find anything on that? Because that, that could also sort of affect the relationship between mm -hmm. um, change in channel mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not that I know. If, I, if there is any, then um, please let me know. Um, but also maybe just a, a, another reminder, um, even though we, we know, well, the, the tobacco ads can only be broadcasted in certain period of time, which is actually during sleeping time, 9.30 p.m. to 5 a.m. local time. So um, perhaps um, this, is, this result is actually upper bound because, um, um, or lower bound because this is the time when young adults should sleep. Uh, but um, yeah, so far I cannot cannot um, um, see the sensitivity in terms of the, the direct impact because how much more they consume per age cohort. Right. Another question is whether you've looked at actual tobacco purchases um, mm -hmm. among adolescents and young adults. Mm -hmm. So I have not started to work on that because that will be about the intensive margin which is kind of not yet this, um, I mean, I'm, I try to be very careful about because I'm, uh, tobacco is an addictive goods too. So uh, I, I think it's an, another a natural pro, uh, part of the paper that should be in, but I, yeah, I haven't worked on it, but I'll, let's see whether we can see anything. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so let's see, there's a question about, um, whether you can say more about work status and how, how that's defined in, in income? Mm -hmm. So uh, it, I control their work status, for example, uh, in the smoking behavior, both in the individual working status. So here, for example, if you're working, um, then there is higher probability that you will smoke. And also uh, I control for the, the working status of the household head. Um, but I don't really see uh, a big impact, I mean, uh, um, estimates for, uh, for this uh, variable on smoking participation. Is that and, a question? So final question, I think, because we're running out of time, I would um, ask like a big picture question about how do you think your results might relate to other types of advertising, for example, digital advertising, mm -hmm. and um, whether you think your results might generalize from Indonesia to other places, and like whether there's something particular about um, your particular setting that um, mm -hmm. might have driven your results. This is like the the, the latest question is always the hardest. <laughs> but the most important, also very important. So I, I'm not sure whether this can be externally valid, but I think the setup here is quite common in developing other developing countries uh, uh, in terms of broadcast media. In terms of digital advertising, um, I think digital advertising is a bit different because they may target certain consumers in their uh, advertising. So in, we may and then the model may need to take into account that instead of like only alpha here, right? Like, uh, like higher chance of you, if you if you are in the location. So there's there may be correlation with uh, with where you live or where what you have been listening to or something like that. So in terms of digital advertising, at least the bigger picture is that hopefully uh, this gives some insights that even in the case that. Uh, um, um, comparing everyone that already exposed, higher exposure still gives some margin on creating new smokers. I think if, if I try, can be careful in, in, in giving some uh, external value beyond the results, I think. Thanks. Mike, do you want to take us out? Yes, uh, we are out of time. Thank you to our presenter, moderator, and discussant. Finally, thank you to our audience of 235 people for your participation. Have a top-snatched weekend. Thank you so much.